Oh, snap. Welcome back to the channel, y'all. My name is Patrick. If you like true crime, take a second, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. We got a case to talk about today. Uh, this one is Tilly Devine, and apparently uh, she was Australia's cruelest female gangster. So let's go ahead and jump right into this one. Tilly Devine was nothing more than a calculating sociopathic evil individual. Matilda Mary Twiss was born into poverty in the London slum of Camberwell in 1900. Growing up, 1900. up in squalor, she and her family lived on the edge of starvation and penury. So to survive, young women like Tilly were forced to sell the only thing they had, their bodies. Mm. As a child prostitute, Tilly soon learnt that London's wealthy gentlemen, so dignified in their frock coats and top hats, had the greatest appetite for her wares. Dear God. Jim Devine was an appalling individual. He was violent, he was brutal, he was foul-mouthed, whether he was drunk or whether he was sober. But something about this sullen, black-tempered man captured her heart and the two were quickly married. A year later, she left post-war London and followed her husband to a land of opportunity and a fresh start. Unfortunately for Tilly, his plan for her was that she was going straight back into the world of prostitution. She charged top price and always collected. Any client Jesus. foolish enough not to pay faced the fury of Big Jim's fists. She quickly learned that you had to be as tough as the men in Sydney, and this was extraordinary for that era because there were very few women who did anything other than what they were told in those days, and became equally as feared as any of the men because she was fearless in as much as she would do whatever it took, and she was violent. She was sentenced to two years in Long Bay Jail for slashing an enemy's face with a razor while he sat in a barber's chair. When she emerged two years later, she planned to put herself at the top of Sydney's underworld. At the time, it was Damn. illegal for men to live off the earnings of prostitutes or to run brothels. But the law made no mention of women. Tilly takes advantage of this extraordinary loophole. There always seemed to be these loopholes with, with governments around Australia in those days. But this one was that it was illegal for a male pimp, if you like, to run a bordello, but it was okay for a woman to run a brothel. And so, so she did. While Tilly opened a string of brothels in Woolloomooloo, Kings Cross and Darlinghurst, police and politicians were desperately trying to clean up the town. There's a lot of petty assault. There were a lot of returned soldiers themselves, young men who were addicted to drugs, particularly cocaine and morphine, which had begun in military Dear hospitals, Lord. but was continued in civilian life. Cocaine, once legally sold through pharmacies, was now outlawed. And heavy penalties for the possession of handguns were enacted. So what the criminals did was they got rid of the guns and they replaced them with cutthroat razors, shaving razors in those days. And these razors were used not only as a very effective weapon in separating somebody from their money in a holdup, they became symbolic. They became known as the Razor Gangs for that reason. Tilly's oh, damn. great rival the razor gang? was a ruthless bootlegger named Kate Lee. She'd built an empire selling grog to drinkers after closing time. Smart and opportunistic, Kate quickly added cocaine to her menu and watched her profits grow. A few suburbs away, Tilly and Jim Devine were quick to tap this new revenue stream. Tilly was running her crime empire as a kind of one-stop shop. Uh, you know, girls were selling cocaine, girls were taking cocaine. Sometimes they were paid, and probably more often than not, in cocaine. So it became this vicious cycle for these girls working Jeez. on the prostitution game. Instead of being paid, they became addicted to cocaine, and it was a very cruel and manipulative thing to do. Inevitably, a battle for supremacy broke out between Tilly and her rival. This extraordinary situation arose where Tilly had a, a rival, another female rival in Sydney, in Kate Lee, and she was every bit as horrible as Tilly Devine. And, and this war erupted between, uh, between these two 
matriarchs of, of Sydney crime, if you like, and, and it was a violent war. Damn. Their fierce rivalry drove each of them to try and outdo the other. As far as I know, it's the only time in criminal history when such a situation has arisen. And they succeeded because they were more ruthless, more powerful, smarter than the men who were buying for them. Tilly and Kate employed violent thugs and standover men to protect their empires. They were called the Razor Gangs. And when they met in the streets, there was bloodshed. She beat a girl repeatedly on the face with her fist, which was covered in diamond rings and lacerated her quite badly. She slashed Holy the girls hell. who worked for her. She was terrifying. She was so wealthy, she could have retired at age 30, 31 without, without too many problems. But she kept throwing herself back into the fray. Tilly's empire, built mm. on prostitution, cocaine, and stealing from clients, boomed with the outbreak of World War II. The outbreak of World War II signified the end of the Great Depression. So all of a sudden, the economy had a, a massive boost. There was money about, and Sydney was again awash with soldiers. She had brothels opening up, and she had girls working around the clock. The end of the relationship for Tilly Devine and, and Big Jim Devine comes in 1948. She finds Big Jim in bed with another woman, and this uh -oh. is the end. She basically tells Jim to get out. He leaves the house and mysteriously, two days later, he is suddenly attacked in the street and slashed with a razor. And everybody knows who arranged it. Yep. Decades of abuse came to an end when she filed for divorce. Big Jim faded into the history of Sydney's underworld. And his ex-wife Tilly continued on without him. On May 19, her life seemed complete when she tied the knot with her new love, Eric Parsons. He was a criminal, but a gentle, subservient type. And Tilly, of course, oh, snap. who has all the not notoriety, all the publicity, all the power and all the money at this stage, basically rules the roost in that relationship, but she's still gone back into the criminal milieu to find her next partner. In an ironic twist to this tale, Tilly, once the battered wife, turned into the oppressor as her nephew, Dr. George Parsons, explains. And there's a couple of legends about him. If he was dancing too close to somebody, she'd uh, sort of de deal with him. There is one legend, I don't know whether it's true, that, you know, that she once shot, um, shot him in the, in the knee on the wedding night when they were, because he, he was dancing a bit close to somebody. In 1953, the press reported she'd spent a small fortune on a trip back to the mother country for the coronation of Elizabeth II. Tilly's final comeuppance, of course, gets great headlines when she returns from the royal coronation and she finds the taxation department is on to her. They have monitored all the spending that Tilly is supposed to have done both overseas and in Sydney decades of tax evasion had finally caught up with her. She uh -oh. made it known fairly generally that she'd spent £20,000 on this trip back to England. And then, strangely enough, the tax department gave her a bill for precisely £20,000. £20,000 in the 1950s is a huge amount of money. That's more than the value of even quite a nice suburban house. Hard money to raise in a hurry, and if she doesn't get it, it's a jail sentence for her. She managed to scrape up the money for the tax man, but her crown was starting to slip. Mm. So this monumental tax bill, together with you know, new blood, new bad blood coming through Sydney's underworld, was really starting to put Tilly out of business. She was a figure uh, from the 1920s and 30s. And in the 50s, she really started to show her age and, and her empire was starting to crumble. She outlived her old nemesis, Kate Lee, but Tilly, battle-scarred and exhausted, faced a fresh wave of enemies. The sad end to Tilly's life is that if you look at the criminal records, even in her last years, there are a series of incidents where she ends up in confrontations, either a 
attempting to glass someone, pulling out a gun and threatening them, or indeed just physical violence. And this is a woman who now is well past her prime, but still, without thinking, immediately resorts to physical violence whenever her temper triggers off. Whilst she was still trying to run her brothels, she simply didn't have the strength or the motivation or the ruthlessness anymore and was easy pickings for the likes of Joe Borg and younger people who came in and took over her area. In 1970, after a long illness, Tilly's life came to an end. By then, she was a forgotten relic. Her obituary summed her up accurately and without pity as a vicious, grasping, high priestess of savagery, venery, obscenity, and whoredom. Damn. That is crazy as hell. Y'all, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on this video. I'll catch you guys on the next one.